so we're going to talk to you a little bit about um, some of the yard work we've been doing out in Adams Field. Uh, you may have noticed uh, that we removed some trees, uh, put up some new fencing, put a driveway in, and dug a giant hole to start building a new state-of-the-art facility. Um, and uh, in, in, one, in the initial goals, when we were having all these meetings starting off, what do we want to have in this facility? We talked about the need to expand the music building to create a facility that supports the teaching, rehearsal, performance, and scholarship of the College of Music, to provide new spaces that expand the capabilities of the college and provide acoustically superior spaces for rehearsing, performing, and practicing and teaching music, to provide state-of-the-art classrooms with current technology to support teaching. So we're going to design these spaces to be highly, highly utilized. They have excellent sound, isolation, infrastructure to support 21st century teaching, uh, performance rehearsal, increased natural light, uh, ventilation, and quality building materials that are going to help contribute to health and well-being of our students, faculty, and staff. So this new addition is an, a, a huge L-shaped structure that is attached to the current music building and is going to provide uh, for a number of new shared spaces. Um, and the transitions into and out of this, this facility also will provide opportunities for new spaces. So we're going to get four new rehearsal spaces. We're going to get a courtyard uh, for socializing, a two-story lobby, a welcome social space, uh, an outdoor terrace um, that looks over into the Beale Botanical Garden, or the bus stop if you're a student waiting to catch a ride over to Wharton. <clears throat> Over 40 new practice rooms, an ambisonics workspace, a quiet room for music cognition, a new recording studio, instrument storage, and some new bathrooms over on, on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the second floor of the structure is going to provide uh, faculty offices, teaching studios, spaces for students to study, and a view down into the lobby space and the terrace space from, from up on the second floor, which we'll see in a little bit is going to be spectacular. Um, the major innovations uh, are going on in our current music buildings. So some of you have already had the opportunity to experience some of these renovations. Um, faculty and new air conditioning and things like that got to experience a little earlier than the rest of you, but we are working on uh, 120, which will be the new Hollander Hall. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, 103 Music Practice Building is now a large 80-seat classroom with enhanced IT capabilities. It's got three projector screens and sound to be able to face the class in various configurations. There's a Musicology Workspace renovation that occurred on the third floor. Um, room three down in the Music, practice bu uh, music Building uh, has been expanded. And if you ever get a chance to go down and see Mary Louise in the piano shop, you've got to see what, what uh, is new down there. It's a, it's a new space for her. Um, Hart Recital Hall, uh, Lee Woodbury broke it, so we have to fix it. You'll see, you'll see him. Yeah, you'll see him actively breaking bit, it here shortly. We had to get rid of it as part of the renovation, um, and so that space is no longer there. And Hollander Hall will take the place of what we used to do in Hart. So, I'm going to turn it over to Todd to show you a little bit about what's going on. Well, we're going to talk a little bit first about the, the new spaces inside. Oh, okay. Remember? Great. Oh, that's right. Oh, yes. All right. <laughs> Got to read the script. <laughs> <laughs> so Murray Hall. Um, Murray Hall is a new performance space with variable acoustics. It's attractive wood features um, on the walls, theatrical lighting, blackout shades, and a skylight. It's going to be for the primary use of jazz. Uh, for <laughs> jazz octets, jazz orchestra, and recitals. But it's also going to be a, a recital space for chamber groups, instruments, and voices not really suited for Cook. The acoustic is different in this space than it is for Cook. So those ensembles that are, that are loud, brass quintet um, uh, and things like that, um, will we'll have access to this performing space. Shallon Hall. Whoops. Uh-oh. Problem. All right. This the bottom the line here is it moves, it moves percussion from the worst facility in the United States to the best facility right. in the United States. Thank you. Yes. So this is going to be a, a primary space for percussion. It's large. It also has large storage spaces attached to it, which you can see in the back of that diagram there. Um, high ceilings and specialized wall treatments 
to improve the sound quality in that space. This is going to be for the primary use of percussion ensembles, group work, and teaching. Large rehearsal. Uh, large rehearsal is going to be a space for the large ensembles, um, including campus band and concert orchestra. So those folks who have been marching over to, to Dem Hall for your rehearsals, you'll be actually able to work in this new space with the, with, because we've got new spaces. So. And those, those rooms are roughly twice the size of 120. Uh, that, right. that room is. It's also going to provide opportunities for studio classes and small ensembles um, and, and additional rehearsal spaces for, for you know, pickup groups and things like that. Medium rehearsal is another space for large ensembles. Uh, men's and women's glee will be over there, infrastructure for ambisonics, an ambisonics performance space in the future. Um, and it will also be an opportunity for studio classes and smaller ensembles in the, in the day. So as, as part of a curricular reorganization, we are going to have uh, some more opportunities to use those spaces throughout the day. Hollander Hall, some of you have already been in this, this space. This is a new uh, renovated space uh, with multi-purpose capabilities. So it's, it's the new home for choral ensembles and opera. It is a classroom space in the morning. Um, and it has upgraded uh, technology and movable furniture, so that room can have many configurations through the day. Uh, variable acoustics in that space as well. And it will also function as a recital space. And uh, there's, a, there's a, a great backdrop in there, and the acoustics are going to make that a terrific space for, for student performances. So when I was originally asked to come up here and talk to you all today, um, I kind of labored around what really to, to do. Uh, I've got lots of progress pictures, but they're not exactly the most exciting thing to look at necessarily. Um, so I opted instead to kind of give you all a little primer, assuming that you don't know how something like this happens. In other words, the steps that we take to build a building like this. Now this building's a little different, or actually it's a lot different because of the level of acoustic treatment that it's received. Uh, the vast majority of the structure is cast in place concrete. The floors are all 14 inches thick. The walls are all 12 inches thick. Um, and then there's a core section in the center that's structural steel. Uh, those are the areas uh, under some of the faculty studios on the second floor and over the corridor on the first floor that we really didn't need as much acoustic separation, so we did them in steel to save a little money. And then there's other areas that are uh, masonry walls, <laughs> block walls. Um, all of the large rooms, as well as all of the practice rooms, have walls that are battered, meaning they're angled, sloped from the bottom to the top inwards. And the reason for that is to cause one, one wall to not reflect straight back at the performer, so that it disrupts the reflections and causes it to fill the entire space. It's the same thing that's going on in this room right now, because believe it or not, even though you can't see it, the side walls in this room up to that eyebrow are also sloped back at the top. So obviously everything starts with a gigantic hole in the ground. Um, <laughs> we, so we excavated down below the level of the existing building. The existing building being built in 1938 does not accommodate modern infrastructure like air conditioning and plumbing. So our building actually, <laughs> our building actually goes like this. The, Basement level is about four foot below the basement of the original building. First floor is lined up, second floor goes up. So we excavated, that's, earth, that's an earth retention system that you see on the side. Uh, basically piles driven into the ground with wooden lagging in between them and that just holds the earth back on the other side so that we can make a hole without the hole having to get really big. Then we tore down Hart Recital Hall. Uh, there was a lot of abatement work and other things that had to happen in there, but I thought you'd all be entertained. If you didn't see it come down or watch it come down. That's my superintendent, Lee Woodbury. See, he's, I told you he's the one who broke it. <laughs> so then, once we get all of the excavation done, we put in uh, spread footings, which are basically the widened area and thickened area uh, underneath each one of the walls that's supporting structure for the walls and the floors above. Uh, lots of steel, there's a whole lot of steel in this building, uh, all told 675,000 pounds of steel. Um, and then once those spread footings were poured, we started to pour walls for the basement and column structure to support the floors above. 
Um, the walls of the practice rooms down in the basement ended up getting divided after the main structure was poured and they were divided with masonry walls and uh, metal stud. So once we had the basement done, we put a forest of, of shoring in the basement and built a dance floor more or less on top that served as the bot underside form for the concrete slab for the first floor. And over the next couple of weeks, we poured those floors. Uh, the floor for Murray Hall was poured on the 18th of February. So that's one of the little interesting things I like to say is that when you walk by the site, everything you see has been created since the 18th of February because before that it was just a hole in the ground. Um, so we poured those over and over the next couple of weeks and it started to, you know, we started to see the footprint of what we were dealing with. And then the vertical formwork went up to make all the large rehearsal spaces. So that, the picture on the left is the vertical formwork for large rehearsal. Those forms are 35 feet high and they are made out of individual sheets about the size of a sheet of plywood and they're all friction clamped together to make the larger panels. The, the tubes that you see coming off them are called whalers. They're a support structure bolted to the floor that keeps the form from blowing out under the weight of the concrete. And then there's a bolt that goes through it to the form on the other side because we're making a sandwich of forms with iron in between that's called a stay. It's a giant bolt about an inch in diameter that runs through it. So this is inside of large rehearsal after the interior formwork was done and all the whalers were set up. And you can see it's a pretty, pretty big space. So then um, when we did medium, this is a view from the top of the formwork looking down into medium. <laughs> and Max enjoying the inside of Murray Hall when that formwork was up. Max can brag he was the first one in there. So you can see, just real quick, you can see the kind of the way that the rebar structure was done in between the formwork and some of the weather conditions that we had to work in. Uh, multiple pump trucks because we had to pour it all in one pour all the way to the top. Um, so it had to happen pretty quickly. But then as we started to strip the formwork and you saw that's percussion there, we started to get a feel, at least that from the roof of the music building, you could start, or music practice building, you could start to see what the building was looking like. So 3,800 yards of concrete totally poured. Um, I like the 12-inch the column that's 6.2 miles tall. Um, and the total weight between concrete and re-steel is 8.8 .8 million pounds. So then the steel structure started to go up in the core. Uh, the areas around the, in front of the lobby, around the courtyard, and carrying most of the second floor structure for the studios and offices on two. We put re-steel up for the, or steel up for the roof above all the large spaces, and decked them. And at that point, uh, uh, looking across from IM Circle, now you can really see what it's, what it's going to be. Over, summertime came and we tore apart 120. Um, which actually a lot of people asked to be involved in that demolition. <laughs> <laughs> Took the windows out, uh, tore the tiers out of 103 to flatten that floor. Uh, in the meantime, we were building out spaces down in the basement, the practice room spaces in the basement. And what you see on the left is uh, one of the percussion practice room floors. That's a four inch concrete slab poured on top of the lower slab with plastic so it doesn't bond. And then it's got all these little spots where spring isolators are put in it and it's cranked down and it picks the whole slab up off the deck. And then the walls are built off of that deck. So all of the rooms in the basement are a mixture of different types of construction, but they are all a completely isolated, both acoustically and vibrationally from the rest of the structure. They're a box inside of another box. Uh, brick veneer application we started uh, in June on the north face and along the edge of the courtyard. It's that part is complete now and they've moved to the south. They're putting, I think they just finished the brick on the south face of Murray. Skylights installation we started and what you see there is partial assembly of one of those concrete raised floors in one of the studios on the second floor. Uh, as 120 started to go to back together, we built out that shell that's behind, there's storage space behind it. The ceiling has a curve to it that's part of the reflective piece. And then there's lower reflective panels that are battered on the bottom and then shaping panels on the top that are a mixture of reflecting and absorbing so that the space can be tuned. When we get the rest of the equipment, because it's not done yet, but when we get the rest of the equipment, it'll have a mixture of var variable acoustic banners like these ones that come around here so the room can be dampened a little bit or allowed to be more live. And new terrazzo floor in the front lobby 
This is before we put that vestibule glass in. Eventually, that panel will come out of the wall and it'll be one continuous lobby all the way across into the pavilion, all terrazzo all the way across, and just some of the stonework going in around uh, the curtain wall enclosure in the new lobby. So, believe it or not, we are 167 days away from turning this building over. <laughs> That will, be, that will be on February 20th of next year, so that we've got time to get uh, instruments and equipment and furniture and everything in place so that it is ready for summer. Um, we're all ready for the, the grand opening in April. Uh, we've got to get the place weathered in, which it, we're still not completely enclosed. Uh, so every time it rains, we get a little bit of water inside. In some cases, we get a lot of water inside. But until we do that, we really can't start interior finishes because we've got a risk of destroying them. At the beginning of next summer, we're gonna do turf restoration and sidewalk restoration on Adams Field. Uh, the large rehearsal space is the, is the space that fixed, uh, excuse me, sticks out the furthest to the west, and it sticks out about 20 feet further than Hart did, but it's in the area where the courtyard was, so functionally the impact on Adams Field when we're all done is almost zero. Uh, the marching band can have it back and use it to their content exactly the way they did before. Uh, and we've got a lot of AV and theatrical systems to install. So. <laughs> Let's hear it for Todd Wilson and his building team and Michael Cross. <laughs>